I mentioned earlier that, uh, that I just got back from Hexagon's uh, big user conference, uh, Hexagon Live. Uh, this year it was down in Anaheim, California. And as you might expect, there was a lot of cool things to see, of course, at any user conference. So in this case, uh, for the metrology group, there, was a, there were structured white light scanners, a really wicked fast CMM. Uh, I'll try to talk about that maybe next week. That was uh, an amazing scene. That was the, the global EDO. Mm -hmm. um, there was the Mega Rob, <laughs> which I'll tell you about the Mega Rob. We'll do a tech corner on Mega Rob next year. That is next week. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Um, and and of course, all the software and peripherals that tie all these things together to create a complete quality manufacturing solution. So th there was a lot to see there. But it really is this last bit. Um, how a quote metrology company is really addressing the complete manufacturing process from, from design to field that I was interested in because this is clearly where Hexagon Manufacturing Intelligence is moving. So I uh, sat down with uh, Hexagon Manufacturing Intelligence President Norbert Hanka uh, to talk a little bit about his uh, division and specifically uh, about the change of its name from Hexagon Metrology to Hexagon Manufacturing Intelligence and uh, why they made that change. Here's the interview. Norbert, back in November, this past mm -hmm. November in, in Hong Kong yep. at the Hexagon Live show there, uh, you made an announcement that Hexagon Metrology was changing its name from Hexagon Metrology to Hexagon Manufacturing Intelligence. Why that change? I mean, Hexagon Metrology, it's, it's a metrology company. I mean, the name kind of makes sense. What's, what's the goal there? Yeah. But um, I have to say as well, I mean, our DNA is metrology and will be, that's for sure. But with recent acquisitions like Vero, CatCam, uh, QDAS, data management, we actually left slightly the feel of pure, let's call it metrology. And I think, what is the underlying story here? The underlying story is that for sure we want to cap capture data, no doubt. But the question is every time, hmm, what do we do? with the data from my point of view. And therefore we came up at well in Hong Kong, you may recon, uh, reconsider this, sensing, thinking and acting. So where we can use the data inside the manufacturing process much better and to interlink. So we are looking into the links to get the connectivity, the data uh, going forward from my point of view. Today we just announced not only that we want to do this because we had further acquisitions of FDI, for example, Farming Technology Inc., where we say, no, we want to go even further in the different phases of the product line, uh, life cycle, like in the design side, from my point of view. So, okay, I mean, that, that seems kind of conceptual, but what does that look like in, in the real world? I mean, you, you have, let's say, a, a, a CMM, and you have, I don't know, a laser tracker, and maybe a structured light, uh, structured light scanner. You've got these, these sensors taking data from the factory floor, and that data, then what happens with it? <laughs> I hope the following will happen, that we get the data, accurate data, uh, okay, that's very okay. important, I think, uh, that this still exists in the sense, and um, then the t we use the data, structure the data, because when we are now comparing different data sets, uh, then it starts to, to start to get information out of it, and that's the whole idea, that the data itself is nice, but we want to have information and then to have actionable information out of this. And what, for example, in the manufacturing process is that for sure we have, a, say, a, a part uh, produced, we inspect this um, as well, then either directly on the machine tool itself or on the CMM and uh, create a feedback loop to the CAT CAM site immediately back. So that's the tool path is, for, for example, changing. These are ideas we have from our point of view, and we have seen uh, more and more customers which are interested to see this from our point of view. And, and does this also include feeding clear back to, uh, let's say, the, the design stage? At the end, yes, fair enough. Uh, FDI is just three months with us. We are working on certain concepts, how to do this going forward, absolutely. I mean, in a, in a sense, it sounds a little like a PLM system. Is yeah. that too? No, no. Uh, people are saying this. No, no it's no, not. No, okay. Because um, a PLM system includes much more data to start off. We are, and that has to be is very clear, we are a metrology company from the DNA side. So we are talking about quality data. That we want, say, with our product MMS, which is done the, the backbone, say, of uh, our information string, we want to disseminate in other areas from my point of view. But we are not creating a PLM system. In, in, in a sense, it sounds like what you're doing is 
uh, many of our, our readers would be familiar with what with, with Ford has been doing. Ford is, is trying to rebrand themselves as not an auto company, but a mobility company. company. Whatever it takes to get from yeah. A to B. And it sounds like Hexagon's trying to do the same thing, but in, in the context of what, manufacturing? Yes. And quality as well, quality manufacturing from our point of view. And I think that is absolutely correct. I think we see ourselves more on the information technology side with the base, let's call it quality from my point of view. Okay. So we, you will hear every time that we're coming back to the quality data. Now, I, I think you told me uh, earlier that uh, you're still in kind of the construction phase oh, yeah. of, of getting all yeah. the pieces connected. So what's sure. your biggest challenge right now to, to get all this connectivity and all this forward you know, feedback and yeah. backward feedback loops going? Yeah, let's be very clear. I think one thing is PowerPoint, and that's normally 10% of the work. So now the details start, and that's normally 90% <laughs> of this. Right. So we have, I think, great ideas. We have great, great people. <laughs> yeah, great synergies. And now we have to work on the synergies yeah, yeah. to make it happen from our point of view. And that's, in most of the cases, we are just either started uh, with FTL or have even f or have going further ahead with other things on MMS and so on. And I would imagine, I mean, Hexagon makes a lot of their own equipment. Uh, 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 yep. Originally, yeah. and of course, you've acquired a lot of companies that make their own equipment. And I'm guessing that the communication isn't always necessarily the same between all of them. Is that kind of a that is and as you have, well? You, you have a, if I remember seeing a booth around here, some uh, a development team, con what convergence, I think was called is, uh, okay. the software, software that helps tie all these together. Exactly. Together. Is that the so I think that is something as well, more on the hexagon side as, as well, because okay. that is needed to be as well. Connectivity is very important, I think, that helps us. And But I do agree, when you acquire companies, there is uh, certain things, say, where you have two cultures, two IT systems, two mindsets as well, and now we have to merge this to a common mindset. And I think we are uh, on a good good way, I must say. I must say. Okay, well, Norbert, thanks for uh, taking the time to talk to us. Thanks, appreciate it. Now, you may have, may have noticed a, a, a lot of what he talked about, even though he may not, may not have used the word data specifically. I think he yeah. did a few times. But a lot of what he's talking about is data. And you'll, you'll see this not only w within uh, Hexagon Manufacturing Intelligence, but within Hexagon as a whole. If you talk to uh, Ulla Rollin, uh, president of Hexagon, I call hexagon. it Big Hexagon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Big Hexagon. Hexagon um, AB, I think. <laughs> hexagon AB. Yeah. Um, th the whole thrust of everything is all of their sensors, whether metrology sensors or geospatial sensors or you know uh, land mapping, whatever, it all comes down to data. Mm -hmm. So what do you do with this data? So in the, in, the, in the sense of Hexagon Manufacturing Intelligence, you're collecting all this metrology data, and sure it's good for inspection, yeah. but his point is, well, it's good for a lot of other yeah. things too. Yeah. If you can feed that data back to design, yeah. you can help the design. If, if you can feed inspection data back to the actual equipment that's making it, you can do real-time corrections, yeah. in many cases, on stuff that's being fixed, and you can feed the data forward the, the field service folks, yeah. right? So it's it's what you do with this data, and that's why they've they've really they've they're doing the Ford thing and kind of rebranding themselves as no, we're not just a metrology company. Yeah. We are a manufacturing data or manufacturing intelligence yeah. company. Well, that's the thing. I mean, and that's why we, we talk about marketing a lot and branding a lot because th th this stuff counts. I mean, you know, you say you're a metrology company, you're hexagon metrology. That means something. It means right. something about test and measurement. That's what you do. Well. Hexagon's much, got a much broader vision. Like Ford has a much broader vision of just being an automotive. It's, it's, it's whatever it takes to get from point A to point B. Right, right. right. But whatever I mean, it is. Yeah, yeah, but there, right. yeah, but there's a much, just like that for Hexagon, yeah. same right. thing. Get from yeah. point A to point B. The idea is that you want to do your work better, you want to manufacture better. And that means gathering data. And it means not just gathering data, but using data. And, you know, it's one thing to just have all this data around as a function of doing the test and measurement, but understanding what it means and understanding what you can do with it is really the key thing right now. And hey, we talk about big data a lot on the show too. I mean, mm -hmm. this is a problem for a lot of companies is saying, okay, we've got all this data, years of data in some cases, what do we do with it now? What does it mean? How do we find the pieces of data where it really counts? That's what Hexagon's looking at. That's what Hexagon's and, 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 and it has its own set of own set of issues. I mean, anybody who follows Hexagon knows that they're constantly acquiring company. We, we yeah. touched on this in the interview a little bit. So 
Hexagon makes its own equipment, you know, let's say uh, Hexagon uh, Manufacturing Intelligence. So you, you got the Romer and you got some other stuff that, that, that they have traditionally made, mm -hmm. right? And so they understand how those communicate and so forth, but then they acquire Cognitens and they acquire, uh, oh, who was the new one they just uh, got? Um, well, Cognitens yeah, was yeah, one. They're yeah. constantly buying new hardware companies. Yeah. And those don't necessarily use the same communication protocols right. and stuff. So now you you've got data sitting there, well now you've got to somehow integrate it within everything else that they're doing, and that is one of the things that they're, they're constantly working on, and they actually have a group set up specifically to say, okay, what is the easiest way to, to have a, uh, uh, an equipment agnostic piece of software, maybe middleware that goes in between the equipment and the cloud or the equipment and, and our other applications that can bring this data in no matter what machine it is right. and allow us to do with it what we want to do with mm -hmm. it. And it is a big issue. I mean, oh. it's, it's harder to control as, as you're always constantly uh, acquiring from totally. the company. So. Interesting company, yeah, Hexagon. It's, it's We've been in that show for, for several years now. Yep. And it's always always a mind open, uh, always, uh, always brain open. Next week, Mega Rob. That's right. <laughs> Stay tuned for that one.